Good morning, Heidi. Hi, Andre. Hello, it's lovely to see you and thank you for giving the time today. You're welcome. I'm looking forward um, to it, I think. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll try and keep it easy. Um, just living my Graham Norton phase. Um, but really, I just wanted to um, sit down with you. Obviously, you've been working here for a few months now. And in this series um, of interviews, we really just want to get um, to know you a little bit more, um, just to hear what you're about. Um, we did this with Joe Forkus, um, and the feedback was really, really great. And it was really nice to just hear from, from senior leaders within the trust about what they're about, what drives them, what they're passionate about. Um, and I know that you have a really, really solid interest in that. Um, so as I've seen from the past few months, I'm really excited for everyone else to see that. Um, so thank you. Um, okay. So let's start off. Yeah, so let's start off really, really simply. Um, how has your first few months been? Um, so obviously it's been a complete privilege to come in as hospital CEO and particularly at such a, a pressured time. Um, so it's, I won't deny it's been really fast paced. It's been taking, a, you know, there's a lot going on in terms of um, how staff are feeling, the ICS, there's um, obviously the groups that we're developing as well. So there's a lot of things that are happening and it's really important that I've taken the time in my first few months to really connect with people and really listen and really understand how it feels so that I don't quickly judge, um, jump to judgment so around what the right thing to do is. So I've really consciously taken the time to speak to people, as you know, get out and connect with clinical facing teams, obviously, and that's on a regular basis, particularly because of the pressures, but also with the non-clinical facing teams to really understand what it's like to work here. So um, it's been amazing. It's been, um, I've been kind of, uh, last week I was kind of quite tearful. I observed something that was just incredible, um, had some very grounding experiences you know, some very inspiring experiences and then some that have, have required me to make some quite tough decisions. So um, it's been a really mixed bag, but um, really excited and it's a complete privilege to be here. Thank you. And it's been really nice to get to know you for the past few months. And I think it's been really, really clear how much um, you place inclusion kind of at the forefront of what you do and really getting to know each person for who they are um, and what they bring and I think that's really really important. Why do you think you take that approach um, as, as opposed to another approach? Why do you want to get to know um, everyone and why is inclusion so important to you? So I think there's a, a number of reasons why it's so important. So obviously the reason um, from a very kind of academic perspective, the reason we're all here is to obviously create the best environment for people working here and to, to give patients the best experience. And so from an academic perspective, there's a lot of research that shows if people aren't valued for who they are um, and genuinely valued for who they are and that their self-esteem isn't strong and that they feel they can be um, and embrace everything about them, their, you know, how they were brought up and bring that to where they work, then actually the impact on their ability to do their job well is quite significant in some cases. Um, and so one example here would be the staff survey hasn't been where it needs to be for a number of years now. Um, and so I feel really strongly that part of my role is, and fundamentally the main part of my role is to create the best environment for people to have the best experience to work here and by default they'll then create the best environment for patients. So that's kind of from a academic um, work perspective but from a human perspective which is my stronger driver really um, I'm just really interested and curious about people what drives them you know what experiences they've had as, as children, as adults and and, what's, and how they've become who they are. Um, so I'm really lucky that I find it really interesting to know what motivates people um, when people are struggling, what is driving that. And sometimes it can be something quite invisible in some ways that actually is having a huge impact on people coming to work and how they're feeling. And, and I've been really fortunate that um, in my career, I've, I've experienced cultures that are quite disempowering, not for me personally, actually, but I've seen others be hugely impacted by a really disempowering culture. Um, and then I've worked in environments where I've been hugely privileged to work for people who have, you know, really made me want to not only be better at work, but be a better person. Um, and, and so I guess it's just, 
I've got very strong values, um, as you know, um, and it's just really important that no nobody here is more important than anybody else. Um, and that needs to be the fundamental foundation. We all have different jobs um, and, you know, you could argue I'm, I'm paid to make some more difficult decisions than others. And, you know, and that's right. Um, and obviously to do various different things, but that doesn't mean that actually my voice is any more important or stronger than anybody else's. So I really want to create an environment, as you know, that people feel that not only that they they want to speak out, but that it's embraced and it's almost expected because then that diversity of thinking, diversity of backgrounds will bring a richer conversation, better outcomes for patients. So I could probably talk about it all day, as you know, Andre, <laughs> but that's kind of the, the breadth of, you know, it's at a human level, it's really important to me, but in terms of my leadership role as a hospital chief executive, it's equally really fundamental that I set that, that foundation for us to be the best we can be. Yeah, no, it, it is really important. And I think that's why the cohort of idea of visible leadership is really, really important and being able to actually see those messages from the people at the top because it gets lost, doesn't it? Um, you have a conversation up here and then people are like, what? There's just such a disconnect. So yeah. any way that we can bridge that gap and actually get that message out, those are really, really good thing. Um, I'm going to pick up on um, something that you said in there, which was the speak up element. Um, and obviously freedom to speak up, we've got here. Um, we have a guardian and then we have values ambassadors, of which I'm one. Um, and I'm really, really um, privileged to be part of that initiative and, uh, and it's something that I'm really proud of. Um, why do you think that initiative is important um, to you um, in terms of patient care, but also um, in terms of our culture? So, um, so freedom to speak up, um, as you know, I've met with you all as ambassadors and it is incredibly important to me and we definitely need to strengthen that area too. So feedback generally whether it's through freedom to speak up or through another means is, is is a gift you know it often really drives um can be a real positive driver for change when somebody's brave enough and one of our kind of values is obviously courage so um it, it ties to that so um i almost have a bit of a um two perspectives on it. So at the moment, we need to strengthen our freedom to speak out. We need to strengthen our ambassadors so people know that actually it's important that if you're concerned about something or something doesn't feel right, that you raise it. But as you know, my vision kind of more longer term, medium term is to shift that so that actually freedom to speak up where people, you know, at times are quite fearful of speaking up. And I've had that since I've been here. Um, that actually we shift that, that we create an environment where people's views and that diversity, as we discussed earlier, people's views and almost have an obligation to speak up um, and that that's embraced and people feel a level of psychological safety to know that if they speak up, that's going to be supported. Um, and so, as you know, my journey around freedom to speak up is really to set and currently in the middle of trying to frame that um, set a real strong framework and ambition of the journey to go from current position where there is a level of people coming, you know, in, in quite a position where they feel quite scared um, and want to raise things to, uh, you know, where actually it's something that people feel really energised to come and say, you know, this doesn't feel right. So um, that could in some respects sound quite naive, but, you know, as you know, I'm pretty determined and um, if I can't create that environment, then, you know, that personally reflects on me, Andre, you know, that's something that's important to me. So if I can't do that, that is something that I need to kind of look in the mirror and think, well, what stopped you doing that? Because that was a priority. Yeah, for sure. And I definitely see that in you. <laughs> Very tenacious of what I would say. Um, I think I think it will happen. And I think even, you know, in the past few months, I've felt a slight culture shift. And I mean, unfortunately, it gets to winter and things get a bit harder and it just gets to be quite reactive. But um, I, th I think we will get there. Um, I'm going to um, flip the conversation a bit and talk about the networks. So um, obviously, you know, we've got four networks um, and you've been really, really heavily involved, actually, in all of them and been really, really interested in what they're about and um, getting to know the chairs and everything like that. Um, we're going to have a new network next year um, called Youth, um, which is for um, staff in non-managerial roles um, under the age of 30, as you know, and you've kindly agreed to be the executive sponsor for that group, um, which is really, really exciting and I'm thrilled. Um, why do you think it's important to have a network specifically targeted at young people, for example, um, and what do you think the um, impact of that could be for staff? So I think, um, so I, 
every network, as you know, is incredibly important and I think we need to have even more. But in, in specific around the youth network, um, I think it's really important because when you're young and I know when I was young, you know, I was incredibly passionate midwife and that at the time that's that was all I ever wanted to do. And it was a huge privilege to do that and it was incredible and but no one I was lucky enough to have people say to me or oh, you could do something else or you know have you ever thought about doing this or, or ask me to work on something and it just made me realize that there were different things you can do to make a difference so yes I was making a difference as a midwife um, but actually your difference and ability to make a difference to people can be much broader if you want it to and so um, I think it's important as people are, um, you know, as we're growing up as individuals and obviously as I'm older now, I think under 30 is really young. Um, so, so as you grow up, you, you really change quite a bit. You know, in my 20s, for example, I changed a lot. Um, and so having people to talk to you, really have curious conversations with you about what opportunities might be. And that isn't in terms of hierarchy, because actually, you know, actually being in a job as a midwife, if I'd stayed in that forever, I'd still be as proud as I am now because I was making a difference. But um, I guess I'm hoping as the exec sponsor, I can inspire some of um, the people who are part of the network to think differently, um, be a really strong voice here at NGH. So um, hidden talent is something that we're often not great at identifying. Um, and, you know, younger leaders, um, I was actually at a, a meeting the other day for new CEOs um, and somebody made a really good point of often at a national level when something is moving forward, why is long standing chief execs are asked for their perspective and somebody made a point of it needs to be balanced because actually these are the future leaders who will be leading the NHS in the changes that we're currently discussing. And I, and I thought it was really powerful and it's the same here, isn't it? You know, some of the, the younger people here will be here for longer delivering care. And so it's fundamental that their ideas are embraced, really, but also at a young age there they're encouraged to be brave, be courageous, think differently. Um, and hopefully that will be in their life as well and just make them have a much richer experience here. Um, and, you know, really, really develop how we think, you know, so because um, we can be quite hierarchical in the NHS, let's be honest. So yeah. um, I think it, right. we just need to break that down. Um, and I guess the final thing I'd say is um, I was really, and I will draw out one person particularly, um, there were lots of people, but I was really lucky to work for Professor Sir Mike Richards when I was at the CQC. Um, and he's he's an incredible man as a human being, but as a as a kind of boss. And um, working for him, you know, it's not easy. He's he's um he's a tough guy and he in terms of, you know, he wants to make a difference in a level that, that I've not seen in many people. Um, but my goodness, it was amazing to work for him, Andre. And I, I just feel so lucky because he not only did I get up in the morning and think I want to do a really good job for patients or I, I wanted to do a good job for him. Um, but he also made me want to be a better person as a whole, because some of the things he stood for were really aligned to my values. So you, you kind of connect, I suppose. But, you know, you kind of look at some people and think if I could be half the person you you are and how you've you impacted on me. And I still do it now. Sometimes if I'm in a tricky situation, I'll think, I wonder what Mike would think if I did this, you know, and it's kind of almost your conscience on your shoulder sometimes. So I'll never be, I'll never probably have the impact Mike had on me, but if I can just make a difference in that network to um, create an environment for people to, you know, really feel safe to talk and, um, and be ambitious be curious, really push the boundaries, think differently, healthcare needs to change and these are going to be the future leaders in healthcare. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm really excited for it. And I want to ask you about, like a personal question as well about um, all the values that you talk about. And we've had conversations about you being a mum and the values that you try and instill in your kids. And I think that's it really comes across. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk more about that and why that's important. Yeah, so um, so obviously, fundamentally, I'm a mum, you know, the boys have only got one mum. So that has to be something that, you know, um, you, whilst I, I obviously I'm hugely privileged to be here, you could have another hospital chief exec. So, you know, 
Um, but I connect a lot of the same things that, um, I mean, poor, so Bertie and Henry are my two boys, they're five and three. Um, and I, I've always thought, what is the most important thing for me to do as a mum? And I, as you probably gather, I sometimes take it a little bit too seriously and overthink it. But um, we've, we've kind of got the rules in the house of um, be kind is, is number one rule. Always be kind to people, um, be brave, be honest and have fun. And so they kind of really embrace those and they talk about them all the time. And so um, I really try and help them understand. So if something's happened at school or if something's happened, you know, that um, that I need to talk to them about or something fun, you can frame it around doing the right thing and, and the impact you have on others. So um, and I actually had a series of books that because they love books, both of them that um, really make kind of values based conversations really exciting and fun. And so um, it's sometimes you can say, oh, do you remember that little giraffe in that story? And you remember how he made, you know, the hippo feel <laughs> and um, and they really connect with it. So um, and I guess it's, you know, mental health is increasing in younger children um, and, you know, it, it can be a tough environment to grow up in. Um, and so I really see my responsibility to almost give both of them a backpack of life so that along the journey you give that values based foundation. But you're also thinking about how you expose them to things that can be a little bit tough and makes them think. Um, so obviously it's proportionate. They're five and three. But, you know, I think the um, the basis needs to be there so that um, those foundations and boundaries are really clear from a young age. But equally, that the most important thing is, you know, to be happy. And so I always say that, you know, whatever's going to make you happy, I will support you in that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they're incredible. They're so much fun. I went to Bertie's um, Christmas carols last night. Um, and I was literally in tears with laughter because they were doing the Christmas carols and for some reason he decided to break out into dance, um, which I do have on video and will obviously show him when he's older. Um, but it was just, I mean, it was fascinating because you look at him and he was so literally in Bertie's bubble and, and you just think their innocence is just, it's just magical really. So yeah, so, um, but you know, I see my role here very similar to create that trusting connection where they know that you're obviously with my boys, they know my love is unconditional. And I think here, whilst it's not the same, um, I'm not people's um, mum and that kind of connection isn't there, but people still need to be able to trust you and people need to be able to trust that your drivers for having a difficult conversation, for example, with the boys or with somebody here is from the right value set and from the right intent. Um, so, yeah, it's um, but it's obviously very fun being a mum and I'm very different um, drum bouncing on the trampoline than I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to see that one day. <laughs> um, no, thank you. It's a really it's a really important message um, and one that I don't think gets shared enough. Um, just how much um, because we are team and you know what I mean? It's like a family, right? Um, everyone needs to be leaning on each other um, for support um, and just for trust. Um, so no, I think it's really important. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about health and well-being, um, particularly as we have somehow ended up back in COVID like square one and seem to be en entering into a rather bleak Christmas um, in winter and it's a really stressful time. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the importance of looking after yourself um, and just recognising um, if you're if you're stressed or tired and just why that's important for people. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> it's really personal, actually, because I was speaking to Tracy as HR director um, yesterday about strengthening the health and wellbeing team at the moment um, in terms of capacity. Um, because, you know, as obviously we won an award last year for our um, importance on, and I can't take any credit for that, I wasn't here. Um, but, you know, I've seen the incredible work the SOS team do. And I think it's really important that we make a strong commitment to people that actually, if you're struggling, you really need to talk um, and you really need to say, do you know, actually, I'm not OK today, guys. I was yesterday and it was the day before, but today it's feeling a bit much. Um, and so it happens to all of us. So I wouldn't want people to think that, you know, because I did when I was a band six midwife, I thought execs were like superhuman 
must be like a different caliber of people. Um, <laughs> I did, I can remember thinking. It. Um, and actually, do you know what? We're so normal, you know, as we've just discussed, I'm a mum, I, I balance those um, things that everybody here does. Um, I'm a normal girl that grew up in a normal family and um, and so I think and so we all struggle some days and we or even sometimes an hour within a day. So I think the message I'd really want people to take is we're all a team and so we all need to look out for each other and you'll know your colleagues that actually aren't quite themselves at the moment and it might just take a five minute conversation or um, somebody bought me a piece of cake the other day and those you know those small things are huge actually because you know that they're thinking of you when they walked into Costa or um, the canteen or whatever and um, and it it means an awful lot those those small things so I think what I would say is we've obviously got the SOS team and the wellbeing support from obviously HR and your team um, but I think it's those small things of feeling comfortable and all of us feeling comfortable regardless of job role, um, regardless of background um, and to feel that we can, you know, draw on the support of whoever is closest at that time um, because it's the right thing to do for you as an individual and equally where you think actually I need to step back because we do have to look after each other, you know, and, and I really don't get it right Andre, you know, I, I I'm not great at giving myself time and I'm always, you know, I'm always being told that. So I'm I'm not leading by example as much as I could in this space. And um, when because it's so busy, you've got young kids, but you can always make excuses. And so I suppose it's really saying to people, you need to give yourself permission to have that time um, and or to, you know, and I am genuinely here. You know, people have stopped me in the corridor or asked to come and see me. I'm here if anybody needs me. Um, I'm probably not going to be the first port call for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, I've had some really good conversations when I've done walkabouts with people that um, have really made me think. And, and hopefully we can all do that to support each other. But at the same time, really, I love Christmas. Um, so um, make the most of um, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, obviously make the, the most of the, the um, leave period. If, if you've got some leave, um, but also um, just time with family, which I think is is hugely important to really be present. You know, I'm guilty of it sometimes, you know, Bertie or Henry will say, mommy, put your phone down because you're not present. You're physically there, but you're not actually present. Um, and they're great at calling that out. Um, so I, I just encourage everybody to not feel pressured to constantly be, you know, to, to make sure you work as a team, I guess. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely true, and I think it's it's important when you say give yourself permission. So, um, I had quite a tough year at the beginning of the year, um, and had to seek support um, for my psychological well-being, um, and that was such a big thing. And I don't know why it didn't need to be. It like made it so much worse for myself just trying to like plod along, clearly not doing very well. Um, so I think I mean I would say. Um, it's really important for men to seek help because I think there's such a pride thing about it um, and it's I don't know it doesn't need to be there so I think and that's why the, the beauty of Movember so I don't know if everyone can see that I'm still trying to rock my Movember look um, got some good feedback so we'll see I don't know if it'll be here for long we've Heidi and I've been giggling about this but um, yeah I think um, spaces like that where men um, in particular can feel um, that little bit connected to themselves and their thoughts and, and their feelings, I think is really, really important. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, I wanted to kind I of finish. On, on that, yeah, Andre, yeah. Just, I, think it, I think it's important to recognise people like you who are really brave enough to say that because the impact you will have on others who will listen to this and think, oh, you know, if Andre can do it, I can do it. Um, and so, you know, I think it is um, some of it going back to diversity, some is your upbringing, you know, if you've, if you've been brought up in quite a stoic household that, you know, you just deal with things, um, then actually admitting I need some help will be quite hard. Um, and like you say, obviously, um, historically, hopefully it's moving into a better place. Men were much more stoic around, you know, I, I can't admit that. And actually, I really admire a man who can say, do you know, I'm, I'm a bit vulnerable at the moment. Um, and so I think it's a really positive thing and I think things are changing, but I think it, it's not just men, it's also um, 
it's also people who are different cultures etc so um and i and i guess i need to keep thinking is there different things we can do here to create formal time for informal conversation to to allow people to nip things in the bud seek that permission in a very subtle way i guess so um if there's anything you think i should be doing i know you tell me andre but um let's keep thinking about more we can do to to promote the well-being of of people working here it's a huge proportion of northamptonshire that works here and we've got a social responsibility as an employer to to think about those things too yeah you've just got me thinking actually so i think i'll pick that up actually i quite enjoy that um okay um i want to talk just quite briefly on kind of safe spaces for um, protected groups and why that's important. And I think it stems from this conversation of where you see something visibly that is clearly advocating for you to, to feel safe, um, and actually the importance of that. So if we talk about the rainbow crossing, for example, that is going to be done at some point, um, hopefully. I think it's been months now, hasn't it, Heidi, that um, it's still not there, but um, <laughs> it will. It's coming eventually. I don't know if the people watching have seen that there's four signs on the um, Pelican Crossing outside uh, the south entrance, which will be painted at some point in the future. I saw hopefully. Them. You yeah. saw me see them. Yeah. I did see you see them, and yeah, and then you said, where's the crossing? <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, it will come eventually, but um, that's really important for, for, for somebody like me who is gay. Seeing that my employer, um, or even as a patient um, or a visitor, seeing that there and seeing that um, the trust is supportive of LGBTQ plus people is so important. And I suppose we just wanted to talk briefly on what else we could do for other groups and to give other safe spaces and just the importance of that. I don't know if you want to say something on that. Yeah, so as you um, know, I, I think some of this is about there's some other trust that we've discussed and I think we've got a meeting in January actually with one trust that is absolutely way ahead than us in terms of networks and how you create those environments for people to feel psychologically safe. Um, and so it's um, where you can learn from others. I think it's really key that, that, you, that you do that. So um, I think we've got that in, I think April's got that in the diary. Um, but I think it, as you've said, and as we started with really, um, diversity and valuing people for who they are, it's not an option. You know, it's not something that's nice to have. It's crucial to the success of us as an organisation and um, and the, the care that pa patients there, therefore receive and the experience their families have. So um, I don't see it as something that, that we have an option. It's something that we should be constantly striving to, to embrace and strengthen. So there's one thing having a safe space, um, which we absolutely should be doing, but how do we take that to the next level and actually safe space to absolute pride to be the difference that we all are? You know, um, so it, I, I guess I'm, as you know, I'm really open to the let's create the safe space, but then let's be really ambitious and have a clear vision for how do we take that to the next level, potentially bring networks together to show that you're embracing diversity across networks, for example, in terms of safe spaces um, and really really not just talk about it, but change what we do. I think I shared with you um, when I was at the CQC, I heard the experience of a blind colleague who constantly listened to everybody's signature every time their email went. And, you know, when I heard what they were listening to, I was like, my goodness, you know, and, and it was kind of trendy to have really cool long signatures, you know, and for them, it was really impactful. So I think we really need to think about, but what are we going to do to change as a consequence of, so create the spaces. And like I say, that's not an option. Um, and I'm hugely committed to that, as you know. Um, but but what does that therefore mean in terms of changes of outcomes for experience of people working here? What does that mean for what are we, do we want to be the best in X? You know, so let's let's be really ambitious and not just think about creating the space, but what that's going to do to drive the change that we need. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'm excited. Um, so I just wanted to finish off really by just talking a little bit about our values um, and what they mean to you. Um, obviously, we've spoken a lot about values based anyway, but maybe just a few of them um, that really resonate with you um, and why that that's important to people. Yeah, so I think um, so courage is one that um, really resonates in terms of um, it's incredibly important that people 
are courageous when they don't feel something's right to take us on this. So I use that one because of the where we are at NGH, because, you know, there is some courageous conversations that are going to need to happen. And it ties to um, leadership style and compassionate leadership is, is, as we've discussed, is quite a trendy word at the moment. And it's an absolute incredible foundation for raising levels of trust and having clear visions and goals and you know a lot of our strategy and our values are aligned to that but you also need and I was reading a Harvard Business Review the other day around that isn't enough because you need to be able to um, I think they called it wise compassion um, you need to be able to make tough decisions at times but in a really human way and so to be able to do that you need to be quite courageous so I think to, to see the change that we need to see here to be not just the best that we can be, but constantly striving to, you know, be be leaders and people wanting to work here. Um, so that one, um, accountability, I think, is a is an interesting one because people often don't want to talk about accountability, but actually, I I see accountability as a really positive thing if you get it right, because you know I've come that. here. Is it <laughs> interesting? Um, because if. I think if people are really truly accountable then by default they're empowered because they 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 have that permission and that um boundary to be able to work within whatever the job role they're working in and across boundaries depending on you know how they work in matrix working or whatever um and so as i said earlier the, um, the nhs can be incredibly hierarchical and i find ngh quite hierarchical um coming in here and um and so I'm trying to say actually accountability is really key because I'm I need you to feel empowered to do your job the best way you can be. Um, and so I think that's really important. Um, so they're probably not the, you know, as you know, I'm driven very much values wise by integrity, by being really honest. So as a person, those values are incredibly strong in me. Um, Honesty, probably to the point where, you know, I might say something that people, what you see is what you get with me, as you know. Um, so so those are obvious and go without saying, but I, I guess I was drawing those um, out. Obviously, compassion is really key. Um, you know, you have to do things in a really kind way. Um, and that doesn't mean, I think sometimes people feel being compassionate is simply being nice. Um, sometimes actually, like we talked about earlier, saying to somebody, actually, I can see you're struggling. It's a difficult conversation sometimes, but actually it's it's from the basis of, of really caring about somebody or being compassionate. So, um, yeah, I could talk about different values all day, as you know. Thank you so much. Um, so that's us done, I think. Um, unless you want to finish off with anything. Um, yeah, just thank you for, um, for giving us the time. Um, and I can't wait for people to see you properly in a way that I think um, we haven't had the chance to before so now I'm really grateful for that. No, you're welcome I guess the only thing I'd like to finish on is to hugely thank everybody for everything they do here um, and I mean that wholeheartedly and um, some of the things I've seen have been as I said have been so inspiring um, I see the pressure that teams are under at the moment every day and I'm, I'm you know obviously out there talking to them understanding but seeing the connection between teams and particularly in some teams at the moment that are pretty stretched and you see that connection, that that united purpose, it is, you know, it is pretty phenomenal, Andre. You know, you kind of feel you go home and it's really grounding, you know, and um, and so I guess to, to genuinely just say I recognise it's really pressured, it's really tough at the moment. Um, but absolutely people are making such a difference to each other and to patients and constantly striving to push the boundaries on doing things even better even in even in these times of pressure so um, a huge thank you to say to people if you haven't met me personally yet and you see me walking around please stop me I know I walk really quickly but um, just <laughs> please stop me and say hello <laughs> well, somebody said stop me the other day and said goodness me you walk quickly um, so um, <laughs> so but do I'm really approachable talk to me and you know let's let's get to know each other because I'm here to, to lead the organisation and be part of the team, you know, the, the, the wider team. So, yeah, so just a huge thank you. Have a lovely and um, festive period if you do celebrate Christmas um, and otherwise a nice break. Thank you.